Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today I'm taking a look at the Minnesota Vikings and specifically going over whether or not they're a contender or a pretender. But before we get into that topic, just a quick question for those of you viewing. Comment down below, who do you think is the best player on the Minnesota Vikings today? Not after the season, not midway through the season. Today, who is the best player on the Vikings? You got to be in Daniel Hunter and his return. Jay Jettis, you got to be in Davin Cook, Patrick Peterson, Kirk Cousins, whoever it is. Comment down below who you think is the best Minnesota Viking today. But getting straight into it, just to make it clear, contender means Super Bowl contender. Not a team that can get to the playoffs, not a team that can even get a playoff win. A team that can get to the playoffs and get all the playoff wins. Go all the way, make a Super Bowl. They don't have to be the Super Bowl favorite. They don't have to bring home the Lombardi Trophy. But can I see them being a Super Bowl contender? Not a team in the wild card to make the playoffs. Not a team that gets a playoff win. Not a team that makes a divisional round. A team that can do it all pretender obviously just doesn't meet that criteria but looking at the vikings as a whole kirk cousins he's one of the reasons the vikings are one of my favorite teams to talk about to you guys kirk cousins is one of my favorite players in the league i don't know what it is it might be his awesome dance moves i don't know he's just a likable guy but with that being said even me a kirk cousins fan knows he has a ceiling no matter what kirk cousins is not going to be patrick mahomes aaron Rodgers, tom brady russell wilson deshaun watson as much as i'd like him to be He's not going to be at best. He will always be a, I feel like his ceiling personally to me is top eight. And that is his ceiling. Eighth best quarterback in the league, maybe seven. Just off the top of my head, I don't, I haven't made the list of my top 10 quarterbacks or top eight quarterbacks. So just off the top of my head, top eight seems like the ceiling to me for Kirk Cousins. But outside of Kirk Cousins, his the plus to him is that his floor is bottom 15. So that gives you a good range of consistency, a good range of always being above average. You always know where you're gonna get. He's always efficient and productive. Is he gonna carry the team like a Mahomes, like a Rodgers, put him on your back? No, but is he ever gonna let your team down? Is he ever gonna be the guy that throws three picks, zero touchdowns, below 200 yards? Probably not, and therefore he's accountable. You know where you're gonna get out of him, and that's what I like. At least he's consistent and efficient in most aspects, but outside of him, getting to the rest of the roster. Dalvin Cook, top three running back in the league. You can make the argument he's the best. Last year he had 1,500 plus yards and he only started and played in 14 games. That's pretty impressive. If it weren't for Derrick Henry putting up 2,000 yards, we'd be talking about, about Dalvin Cook a lot more. I truly think he's just as, he's really close to being just as good as Derrick Henry. I don't think it's far away with the Christian Derisaw, with the new guard and Wyatt Davis, and like I said, the new tackle and Christian Derisaw, a better line. We could see Dalvin Cook lead the league in rushing yards and I would not be surprised looking at the offensive line I've kind of just addressed a little bit there are some worries especially compared to last year but I do think are they is the Vikings team going to be this top 5-0 line this year no but are they going to improve from what they were last year yes O'Neal's a good tackle hopefully him and Christian Derrissal can create a good tackle duo on the outside perimeter hopefully Wyatt Davis can come in and be a decent guard but I expect Davis and Derrissal to be this starting linemen that just carry the Vikings to the Super Bowl and just create a fortress of a wall. No, but I do do I think midway through the season they could become starters they could count on. Yeah, I think they can improve the O line from last year. And that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm sure Vikings are ask Viking fans are asking for. Just improvement. Just something they can count on. And I do think Darisaw and Davis in time will be something people can count on. Looking at the receiving core, Jay Jettas is arguably a top ten receiver already. Adam Thielen is as reliable as they come and Earth Smith Jr. is going to be a big athletic tight end. He's going to be a question mark because we don't know what he is yet, but him getting the role as the number one player, as the number one tight end, as the starter at the tight end position, we're going to see his full potential. I'm excited to see that. So I'm liking the receiving group and I'm liking the offense as a whole so far. Looking at the defense, Daniil Hunter coming back, that's huge. Last time he played, last two times he played, he, each of those seasons he had 14 and a half sacks. I don't want to say Vikings can already count to have 14 sacks a season because that's I don't want to jinx anything. But I've already predicted in other videos that Daniil Hunter has a record season when it comes to his career high in sacks. I think he's going to top it for a number of reasons. He's going to be hungrier than ever. He's playing in 17 games. And I just think he's going to have more defensive talent around him to feed off of that's really going to up his and the rest of the team's game. So I do think he's going to take off. And I do think he could get 14 plus sacks. I just don't want to jinx anything. Looking at in the trenches at the you know, the guys that run stoppers, you added Sheldon Richardson, you added Dalvin Tomlinson, you already had Pierce. Pretty good defensive line as a whole. Is Tomlinson, Pierce, and Richardson going to rack up sacks like Hunter? No, but that's not their job. Their job is to stop the trenches, to crowd the trenches, to press the box, and, you know, bring some noise towards them, to attract some guys towards them, and open up some one-on-one matchups for Daniel Hunter so he could do his job. 
to get the rest. They also drafted Pac Patrick Jones, a guy in the third round of pass rusher that could help get some more sacks. I like the front four and front line as a whole. Guys leading the secondary is obviously going to go to Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr. Pretty good duo. They drafted Ch Chaz Surratt. Excuse me on that pronunciation, but that's how I'm saying it for now. I'm liking the linebackers. I like Chaz to develop behind him. Eric Hendricks is a top five, top three linebacker in the NFL. He's a great captain for this front seven. Looking at the secondary, you got Xavier Woods, you got Harrison Smith, you got Pat Pete, you got Bashad Breeland. This Vikings team is as well rounded as it comes. They're stacked to the nines. I like them. Are they, you know, I feel like in a couple positions, they don't have the best in the league. You know, they don't got Pat Mahomes, the best quarterback in the league. They don't have Jalen Ramsey, the best corner in the league. They don't have Aaron Donald, the best pass rusher in the league. But what they also don't have is many gaps. They don't have many holes. Again, they don't have the number one position in the NFL. In some guys, Dalvin Cook, you could make that argument. But for the rest of the team, I like how well-rounded they are. You know, I'd like to have a team that's well-rounded on that are top 10 at their position, top five at their position in some cases, and not have the top one, yet everyone around me is stacked. Everyone around me, there's no holes, there's no weak spots. And that is something the Vikings can account on, and that's why I like them this year to be a contender. That would be my vote for the contender versus the pretender. What are the Vikings this year now? Just because I like them to be a Super Bowl contender doesn't mean I'm calling them my Super Bowl favorite. I'm just saying if they won out there and brought home a Lombardi trophy, I'm not going to be surprised. You just can't tell me they're less of a Super Bowl contender than not being one. I just all around, do I think they're going to go out there and take home Lombardi Trophy? That's a different video. But to say they're not on par with the Rams or Packers or Bucks or Seahawks or Niners or Cardinals, I don't believe that. I don't know if I'd say they're the favorite, but I just think last year they were expected to be a playoff team. They still went just under 500 at 7-9, and nine, and that's not too bad figuring the amount of injuries and just the COVID they had to deal with, the amount of new guys they had to work with. This year, having more experience, having more reps, having more chemistry, having more health, I could definitely see 11-12 win season for them. I could see them winning the division, Aaron Rodgers or not, and therefore I like the Vikings team this year. A lot of it is going to be dependent on Mike Zimmer and his defense. Can they stay healthy? Excuse me. Can they stay healthy? And can they become a top five defense like some assume them to be? I think they can be. A lot of that's going to be dependent on that. But if they can do so, this Vikings team will bring wrath to the NFL. They will bring a lot of wins to their home. And I do think they could cause a lot of trouble in the playoffs. A lot of it will depend on the playoff matchups, of course. You know, if you open up against Tom Brady at home in Tampa, you could go home short, but I still wouldn't count them out. I still think they're a Super Bowl contender. I think it'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Of course, like I said, they have limitations in some positions. Kirk Cousins has a ceiling, but when you have a top three running back and improved O-line, Jay Jett is a top 10 receiver, a top five defense, the rest of the roster can carry him and help him out. Not to say carry him as in he's doing nothing, but, you know, give him that little extra boost that this whole Vikings team could be looking for. Overall, contender, pretender, contender goes for goes to the Vikings for me, for my vote. But I do want to hear from you guys. Do you agree or disagree? Maybe you think the Vikings don't stand a chance. Maybe you think, that, yeah, they're a playoff team. Like I said in the beginning of the video, that could even get a win. But they're not going to stand a chance against the Bucks, Rams, Packers. Maybe that's not my opinion, but that might be yours. And I do want to hear from you guys. Or like I said, do you think they're a pretender? They're not even close. They're going below 500 again. They're going to move off of Kirk Cousins. I wouldn't be surprised if Ken Lamont's in this year. I want to hear your takes. I want to hear your arguments. I want to hear your opinions, and I want to reply back. I love commenting back to you guys in the comments, so make sure to drop the comment down below. As far as the question today goes, referring back to it, I asked, who is the best Minnesota Viking today? I'd like to pick Daniil Hunter because I do think he's a little underrated, but personally, Dalvin Cook's awesome. He's a top three running back. I feel like even though he's rated as a top five, top three running back, he still doesn't get the nth degree of respect that he deserves. I do think he should be right there neck and neck with McCaffrey, with Henry, whoever you got in your top three. Dalvin Cook should definitely be included in yours. I think he's that good, but maybe I'm a little biased. I did like seeing him come from FSU, but who knows? I'm a big fan. I'm like when he's doing the NFL, but I do think he is the best team or the best player on his team. I know there's other talents out there. Daniil Hunter, like I said, Pat P, Jay Jettas. You could pick Adam Thielen. You could pick Kirk Cousins. You could pick whoever. But for me, I'm picking Dalvin Cook. Who are you guys picking? Let me know. As always, and of course, I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you for watching, guys. Two minute warning.